Hey everyone, Crystal Grace here. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. This one is all about the current tea, the current gossip on you. We do have the number eight connected to the back of this crock plug. So three piles to choose from. Pile number one, we have the teddy bear and the number eight. Pile number two, we have the tennis racket. Maybe it's a squash racket. Looks more like a tennis racket. And pile number three, we have the ice cream uh, cone. Sunday, Sunday in a cone. Um, so a quick disclaimer while you guys are connecting with one of these crock plugs. As always, uh, I do not set intentions to conjure messages from the skies above uh, to ruin your day. So please trust me when I say if something starts to trigger you and makes you feel angry and aggressive, please trust the fact that that message is not for you. It is for somebody else. You only have to pop down to the comments on the hundreds of videos I have created um, for my audience uh, to see that the messages do find the right person. <clears throat> so with that said, let's go. Let's get into what is the current tea on you? What is the gossip? Pile number one, welcome to your reading. So those of you who chose the teddy bear and the number eight. So eight is a very spiritual number. I do know this. Um, what else can we say about this number? We could think about the eighth house. And obviously the eighth house is connected to the house of transformations. Um, obviously strong Scorpio energy there. So some of you could be Scorpion. Um, I don't know. I uh, don't know. Maybe some of you have born in the 80s born in the 80s oh. so yeah maybe that is it it's crazy isn't it there isn't much out let it go let it go teddy bear so super cute <clears throat> Uh, look, some of you could be quite cuddly or like have no issues like displaying affection in public. So public displays of affection may be something that is quite uh, welcoming for you guys. Um, maybe it's the opposite. Mm. But based off you connecting with the teddy bear, I would say for most of you, I would say public displays of affection is something maybe you crave with your lovers, crave with your friends, something that you have no issues or qualms, uh, to say the least, that you have any issues with showing like public displays of affection. This could be a general conversation happening about you right now, um, <clears throat> although I feel like this is more of an energy check-in. Some of you, your favorite color could be green. It could be beige. It could be black. Uh, I always look at, I don't know why, purple also is very strongly affiliated with the number eight right now for me. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, pinks and purples, like a pastel color as well, but more like a, like a bright, deep purple. You might have really soft, cute little ears and a button-like nose. You might, like, your you might be on the shorter side of life. Uh, you might have a quite a round face here, very dainty nose, um, really small feet, small hands. Uh, so you might have a little pod, podge, podge, podge on your stomach. Um, you may prefer to like choose comfy clothes over like, you know, uncomfortable stilettos and like tight dresses. You might be more uh, happier in more comfortable clothing. Not to say, this isn't to say that you don't wear stilettos and 
dresses or dress to the nines but I feel like at home in the privacy of your own home you like to seek comfort in your clothing so <clears throat> let's grab some astro placements because I know you guys like that we'll just pull this I know some of you do not like it when there is too many dice, creates confusion. Creates confusion. Okay, we have Neptune. There's number eight. So it's strong Scorpio energy here. We also have Libra energy. So <clears throat> the thing about Scorpion energy, very sexual energy. So I don't know if people are currently gossiping um, or talking about your transformation recently that has got people finding you very sexually attractive now there is something very different about you your energy is very different it's very sexual um when i think about neptune energy what do i think what do i think hmm i feel like what the tease on you guys you might actually have some people who are talking about how to have sex with you or like how to get lucky with you um so you may have recently met somebody started hanging out with somebody somebody that could potentially be a suitor you may not think this person is interested there could be other people around this person who is also interested. So for some of you, don't want to like, this is not going to resonate with all of you. And please don't go on some kind of expedition, uh, conquest to identify whether or not this is real, re resonating. This either going to connect with your intuition naturally or it won't. So some of you, what the tea is, is like how to get you into bed, okay? So with this strong eighth house, right, it's very like taboo. So to get you into bed, it's quite taboo um, in the sense that, not in the sense that bedding you is the wrong thing, but it's the hard thing. It's like, it's not easy. Like to get you into bed is very, very hard. Like people need to transform. Maybe to get you to commit, people need to transform themselves, be better in the bed, be better in the uh, sense of intimacy, maybe be interested in the occult. But I definitely feel like the tea for some of you, there could be some kind of like bet going on, which is quite taboo behavior to try and bed you, okay? So you're either gonna like connect with that or not. Now, thinking also about <clears throat> Neptune, this is a lot to do with like dreams, sensitivity, uh, mystical, like intuition, you know, imagination. So the T on you could be the fact that you're very intuitive, you're very imaginative, you're very mystical. And that's what I feel is the element of the taboo sense with the eighth house. Uh, Neptune is obviously linked with Pisces. It's also exalted in Leo. For those of you still seeking <coughs> astro placements here um obviously scorpio is connected with mars energy mars energy is connected with aries so that is just something to um to to consider i feel like you know other elements of the scorpio is connected with uranus uranus is very disruptive very rebellious um, energy right very eccentric and you bring a lot of change of feelings and emotions with people or at least after you bed them or have sex with people they feel very very different so maybe what the tease or some gossip also going on here for some of you is like people are talking about when they've had sex with you what happens how it feels and I feel overall like why it feels very taboo for them it feels i feel like if you're very witchy and very mystical mystic 
mysterious, mystical into the occult. People may, as this tea is unfolding, what the gossip, like as the gossip is unfolding, these people may begin to feel like they're doing the wrong thing by talking about your experience, your sexual experience with others, which makes it taboo is sort of the vibe I'm getting here. Obviously we have Libra energy here. Um, what do you say about Libra? What do you say about Librans? Librans, uh, look, I, one of my, well, all of my siblings are older than me, but my eldest sister, she, her son sign is in Libra. And um, she's very like keeping up with the Kardashians. One of my best friends back in the day was also a Libran. And she was also very like keeping up with it. Like they like the finer things in life. Um, they like designer stuff. This is just from my personal experience. I could be completely wrong for others, but this is sort of what's coming through to sort of give you that energy check in that this is definitely your pile. But yeah, like they're all about having balance in their life and doing the right thing. I agree with that, but they're also kind of like, I don't want to say vindictive, but like they're always a little bit like it's my way or no way. There's always like a bit of strings attached for anything that they do. Um, now, it's not all the time. So I don't know if you attract people like this or people, this is some kind of like tea or gossip on you at this moment. Uh, ultimation, ultimatums as also coming through here. So I don't know again if these people are talking about that. But overall, like Librans, I, I, I don't think any sign placement has takes the crown for worse personality traits. We're all equally just as fucked up as each other. Uh, they all are, I should say. So yeah, hopefully um, that sort of gives you some confidence you pick the right pile. And the last thing I sort of want to acknowledge is like, the opal stone is heavily connected with the Libra sign placement. So some of you could be wearing opals. Are you comfortable yet? Have you found a spot? Is that where you're going to lay? Put in? So let's jump into it. Let's find out what the current tea is on pile number one, shall we? Hmm? Hmm? I'm seeing three of swords, <clears throat> which is very much heavily linked to Libra energy. I'm hearing don't go, don't go breaking my heart. Um, so we have the hangman, we've got the lovers. Yeah, okay. I'm, we have the six of swords. No, don't roll your head out. You've got all this space behind you. You've had, to, I've just been literally sitting on the lounge for an hour and a half, chilling out. And I thought I'm on my working week, the working of mine, if you're not aware of this. So they're big days and I got home not too late today. So I was like, I'll chill out on the lounge. Cats, no cats come near me. And as soon as I come in here to do this, for an hour and a half, mind you, here they are. Here they are. One more. You're like, bitch, I don't care about your cats. Look at this creature. Just go there. Cool. Cool. All right. So there is a theme going on here. We have the worst camera angle in the world. Cool. Shoo. So we have the hangman, the lovers, the six of swords, knight of cups and the tower. We also have the world as the overall energy. I'm heavily picking up here. There's that three of swords. I'm heavily picking up what the tea or the gossip is from you is two different scenarios, right? Is after people bed you or like get intimate or get close with you, you either end the cycle there and then or you pull back your energy. You are very hard to lock down for some of you, okay? So just bear with me. There is another situation going on here, but we're just going to start. We'll start with the good and then we'll 
We'll start with the good and then we'll sort of go into the bad, okay? Not the bad, but the other scenario. <clears throat> the world definitely indicates to me that people feel like they've accomplished a lot, they've achieved a lot by betting you, right? By getting close to you. They definitely feel like, you know, they can sleep a lot easier knowing that they've accomplished you. I think you're very hard to obtain. You're very hard to get into the bed. At least this is what people are talking about. But those who are very successful about this pile one, you need to be quite mindful of that, especially those who end up ghosting you, pulling back their energy. Um, ones that, you know, present the idea that they're going to be into going to a relationship with you, but don't. They sort of move away, move on to the next romantic rendezvous. Um, uh, it's because you are a conquest and that's what I feel like that's what these people are talking about for a lot of you you're very attractive you have a very strong sexual energy a very strong sexual aura you're very very attractive but you're very unique and very different and I feel like you're very taboo in regards to uh, having a relationship with so what people are gossiping about what the tease about you at the moment if you're wondering why you can't get into a relationship or you're wondering why like People pursue you and then once they've got you naked, once they do the deed with you, they then put a pause on the connection and sort of play hard to get and sort of end up just sort of moving away, moving on to the next romantic connection, causing you a tower moment here. It's because they see you as something that is quite taboo. So I feel like for a lot of you, you could be very unique and very different and these people can't handle that, okay? At the end of the day, people who... Um, a two mainstream, let's go with that, 2, 3D. They can't handle people like you who possess a, a very strong sexual energy, somebody who's quite goddess or god-like looking, you know, uh, very, very attractive here. You may get a lot of attention and I feel like a lot of people can't handle that, those people that, uh, you know, come towards you romantically. I definitely feel for a lot of you this may... Um, that main message will, will resonate with you. And for others of you, it's sort of like the other, it's not the opposite to this energy, but it's like you are the one who puts a pause on connections. You're the one who doesn't put any effort in. You're the one who sort of moves on to other romantic connections, creating tower moments for others because they, I don't know if it's because you know they're only going to hurt you or because you are her and you're sort of looking for maybe the person who is very similar who who sort of stole your heart here with the three of swords so this is sort of the current tea on you the gossip so i would have to say this energy would have to be coming from people who who uh, have got access from other people who have been in this situation with you or who are actively analyzing you, okay, uh, through conversations, things that you have um, discussed with them. But I definitely feel like with that Three of Swords energy, uh, there is a lot of hurt and pain here with soulmates, karmic soulmates here. There's been a lot of breadcrumbing. Um, and these people from your past are still sort of prevalent right now. Like I feel like these people are still people sort of coming in and out of your energy. So what I mean by that is you have people that you've fallen in love with, but you can't let go. So if they do rock up into your life again, you sort of maybe go through this cycle. Uh, it's a very karmic cycle as well. So this is the tea on you. I don't know if the spirit guides are giving this tea. Maybe some of you just sort of needed a reality check here. And this is the message that is coming through today. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like for a lot of you, maybe the gossip or the tea is like why you can't lock down a relationship. And it's because people sort of maybe use you for sexual um, uh, experiences and then sort of put the relationship on pause and move towards and if you don't chase them they will not chase you that is another t uh message here in regards to t like if you wonder why people don't chase you it's because you don't chase them they feel like you don't put any effort into going towards them and i'm hearing that's fucking bullshit um 
but if you have been in a three of swords energy for a very long time it may be actually quite hard to realize that and understand that and see that that is actually happening because you have this like boundary set up you have this wall set up so show me what other things people are gossiping about with pile number one Oh, the three of swords there is pain here so people are definitely talking about something you may need to release and with the fact that we have the knight of wands here this is a fuck boy fuck girl so this is the karmic this is the one that got away this is the one that stole your heart put you on the bathroom floor in fetal position cry 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 we've all been there it's, and we've all got this sort of person in our life and if we don't have it in our life, we at some point had this in our life. But this Knight of Wands is somebody that people are actually talking about. This Knight of Wands could also be talking or gossiping about breaking your heart and wanting to return here. Um, we do have the Eight of Pentacles here. So you may work with this person. This could be definitely a Knight of Wands having uh, a conversation about you the pain that they are or the grief that they presented to you. Um, maybe thinking about trying to repair this. I don't know. Knight of Wands though, you know, hard work. Now, if this isn't a Knight of Wands having this conversation, the T here would be you are non-committal because you have a broken heart. Like the reason why you move through sexual partners the way you do is because you are the fuck boy, fuck girl, because you have been a, like emotionally abused, maybe mentally abused, physically abused here with the Three of Swords. You have been cheated on here. Um, so people could definitely be gossiping in the fact that you are happy to be single and just having sexual encounters with people because you are non-committal. Okay, and that could also be how we um, read these cards. Um, what else? What else are people talking about? Three of Pentacles. You know, Three of Pentacles and the Knight of Swords. We've got a lot of uh, court cards here. We have the Eight of Wands. So <clears throat> the last thing we're going to talk about, what people are sort of talking about you at the moment, before we move on to Pile 2, uh, Three of Pentacles and the Knight of Swords. Some of you, if you are in a connection or you are currently talking to somebody with the Eight of Wands here, um, people are actually gossiping about this being a good match. Um, if whoever you are currently talking to, people are talking about that. So whatever you are talking about with this person, this person is talking about those conversations with people at work, but in a very positive light here. They could be discussing like you are like, you know, you have gone through trials and tribulations with romantic suitors. That is why you're non-committal. That is why you only seek a sexual encounter. However, you don't just sleep with anyone. You have prerequisites is what I feel. Like you have a checklist here. People have to be in some way, shape or form compatible for you to take action towards. But once you know that they are sexually compatible with you, I feel like these people are saying you take action pretty quickly the sexual encounter happens quite quickly and it's over quite quickly and that could be this transition of you moving on to the next one because you are broken hearted here now <clears throat> again if that's sort of not resonating I would say the three of pentacles and the knight of swords the T here is the fact that like you are getting good praises at work like you're a really good team player you're very fast moving you're a high performer in the workplace your communication skills are really good you're getting shit done at work and that's a really good sort of final message to end on because although you've got all these strong sexual conversations happening around you work life seems to be really good you're getting positive feedback reviews in the workplace because of your level of performance and how quickly and easy you get the job done here people really do like working with you at work they find you very witty they find you very funny they also find you very uh articulate and argumentative in getting the job done and doing it the right way, working in the right environment as well here. So um, that is all I have for you. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye. Pile number two, welcome 
to your reading. So those of you who pick the tennis racket and ball, obviously you may like tennis, you might like to watch tennis, you might like to play tennis. But the thing about tennis, right, it's a racket sport that is played either individually against a single opponent or between two teams or two players. It's not a, like it's a social sport, but it's not overly social, right? So you either play with one other person or maybe in pairs. So I kind of feel like for a lot of you, those of you who like tennis or maybe like, I fucking hate tennis. But the thing about that, if you fucking hate tennis, I feel like you might fucking hate people and you may not like to be around a lot of people. Large groups of people might be like fucking annoying for you. You'd be like, this is too much, you know? Um, I also have this funny feeling like you don't really like like balls being thrown around near your face or something like that. Um, and mind you, I'm just pulling up fun facts about tennis on my phone to try and understand why the tennis racket has come out to represent your pile. You know, its history dates back to the 20th century, so maybe we've got some a lot of old souls here. Um, you know, it's evolved from indoor play to outdoor play. So again, you might like more indoor time than outdoor time based off that. Or as the older you got, you prefer to be more indoors than outdoors. It also has a very unique scoring system, right? And famous tournaments make it a very fascinating, enduring game. So the thing I'm thinking about the unique scoring system is you might give individuals a unique score. So some of you who have picked this pile, not all of you, you may score people on their physical skill, their mental skill, their spiritual skills, uh, you know, they're, yeah, they're physical in the sense of not what they can physically do, but maybe their appearance here. But yeah, I kind of feel like for this pile, you might be super like judgy within re re reason, because I don't think I attract like mega cunts to my channel. I really don't. Um, but hey, like if you want to be like Dan Levy and be judgmental, that is absolutely fine in a humorous way. Like there's a way to be judgmental and not be a mega cunt. Like I do believe that. Um, but yeah, I feel like with the unique scoring system, I feel like you're hard to maybe break the ice with. I feel like, or at least this is what people talk about when they talk about you, you're not easily like wooed. People can't just walk in, sweep you off your feet. Like when I think about tennis people, they're very hoity-toity. They're very like, you know, middle to upper class kind of people. Probably more upper class, right? They're very like, like everything picture perfect, I feel like. you. Some of you may have a little bit of OCD with cleaning. Um, but yeah, I feel like when you hit things, you like when you make a decision on something, like you go for it, you hit it, you hit the ball right out of the park, a bit like baseball. Um, you may have an, a strong affiliation with 15, 30, and 40, okay? Um, and obviously the term love uh, is for zero, is believed to have... Uh, originated from the French word for egg, loaf. Uh, so <clears throat> obviously I didn't, I don't know a lot about tennis. Um, don't mind playing it, but nah, can't, I'm not there yet. I'm never going to say I'm never going to watch tennis because I said that about never playing golf, but I would never watch golf. So some of you may hate golf as well. You might like to play it. But yeah, I definitely think to love you or to get involved with you is not easy, is what I feel. Like, like you you definitely have a, a unique scoring system in regards to what kind of people you would date or allow into your life in regards to the friendships. So let's pull some astro signs. Um, so seven is the seventh house. Seventh house is linked with Libra energy. Uh, we also have Virgo energy and I, from memory, from memory, I think that is the south node. 
So your south node could be in Libra, your south node could be in Virgo. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. South node is all about karmic past, inborn abilities. Virgos are very routine based. They're also very organized. Well, they try to be. Libras are also sort of quite organized until you open up the cupboards in their homes. Might be a little bit messy. Hello. So yeah, uh, basically I feel like with the Libra energy here, it's obviously connected with Venus. We sort of picked that up with the tennis. So maybe a lot of you are like, have a lot of love for like arty stuff stuff, but I definitely feel like you love the idea of love, but you're also very picky in regards to who you love and who you allow to love you. Um, I also feel like a lot of you have a very natural beauty. There's something very pleasant about your like physical attributes. Like people like could be talking about this at the moment. You're not a plain Jane, but you don't overdo it on the makeup or the jewelry or the like the aftershave. You're very keep it simple kind of people, I feel, and at least this is what people are talking about. But when I think about Venus, obviously Venus is linked with Taurus. So this is another Earth sign. So I feel like you guys are really grounded. And what people are talking about at the moment is you are very grounded. You're very selective with who you invite into your circle. Um, like you might have a lot of acquaintances, but you don't have a lot of like BFFs like and maybe you do maybe you just don't have a lot of acquaintances you've only got real long-term solid friends and you don't invite new people into that circle so take that as it resonates um, other things about Virgo obviously linked with Mercury Mercury is also linked to Gemini but they're really big on communication they're very um, they they think very intelligently and I feel like a lot of people might gossip about your current thoughts maybe on life or something that is currently happening around you um, you have a very nice writing style also is what I feel just to confirm like just to give you confidence the right pile for you but you are highly intelligent and you can articulate things so anyone can understand what you are saying. Say if you're having a conversation in a group or at work and somebody's like, I don't know what's going on. You can articulate it in a way to make anyone understand, like a two-year-old, a five-year-old, a 35-year-old, a 70-year-old. That's the sort of vibe I'm picking up a little bit there. Um, Libra is exalted in Saturn. Okay, so I feel like for a lot of you, very structured, you're very disciplined. Um, you are all about commitment. When you make your mind up, you definitely move towards your goals and your dreams and you don't let up until you've achieved it. There's a lot of, there's been a lot of success in your life, but a lot of challenges as well. There's been a lot of restrictions or limitations put in your way, but you've always come out on the other side is what I feel. And I feel like a lot of people would talk about this that are aware of those challenges. So your close friends, um, I feel like that could be the tea on you. You've become very disciplined, very structured in your routine to acquire whatever you have recently acquired, uh, which I think is fantastic. And it's always, um, I always love uh, picking up on that energy that people are achieving goals and dreams. So we're going to pop these over here. We've got a cat. We do have... A cat. Huh? So what is the current tea, the gossip, on pile number two? Um, we have the king of cups. We've got the hermit. You guys got an extra card here, but no, you didn't. With the ace of pentacles, we have the nine of swords. We have the five of swords.
the magician okay so king of cups is the overall energy what's the current gossip on you look if there is overall it could be the king of cups this is a person doing the gossiping talking about you but <clears throat> what's the tea on you i would feel like people are viewing you as the king of cups here i feel like uh you guys have got your emotions in check and that was something that i was sort of picking up when i was thinking about the moon and the moon in regards to the moon is obviously cancerian energy pisces in the tarot but taurus is exalted in the moon and we sort of picked up on that taurus energy with venus so I kind of feel like you guys, what people, the gossip about you is you have very strong instincts. Like you, you could be people who feel other people's emotions really easily. And I don't really know how to explain it. So the queen of cups is very intuitive. She can pick up in, through her intuition about people like good judgment or bad judgment of people. But I feel like with you, what people are gossiping about is your level of instincts, like how they're always right about people. Maybe it's the instincts that you get or you have. And I feel like these are all very different for each of you. I don't really know how to explain it, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying here. But there's something about your instincts. I think it happens subconsciously. Okay. But... People are currently gossiping about your instincts and how it's like they don't happen consciously, they happen subconsciously, but they're always right. I don't know how to explain that. I don't even know really what that means, but that is sort of what's coming through. You have a lot of positive habits as well, or you have a lot of habits. Uh, the <coughs> Again, not sure why that is coming through. So let's talk about the King of Cups, right? The King of Cups sort of people are very emotionally, uh, got their emotions 100% under control, right? But I kind of feel like you, the gossip on you at the moment is it could be the fact like you are ready for love here, okay? That could be what's being said about you at the moment. You are currently looking in the darkness for love. You are trying to find a new beginning here. You're trying to manifest somebody into your world. Um, you know, to be able to share life with. Um, for some of you with obviously the Nine of Swords and the Five of Swords here, they could be discussing that this is creating a lot of turbulence within you because you're not having much luck trying to find your King of Cups or trying to find the person of your dreams here. Um, now, <clears throat> that might sound a little far-fetched for people. That is just a sequence that we are seeing here with the cards. But I also feel like for a lot of you... Um, People, what they could be talking about is like, you know your worth now. Like, I feel like even with the Seven of Wands there, like you may not have had very good boundaries before, like when handing your like cup of love over to people, but now you do. I feel like with the King of Cups, you don't allow people to manipulate you emotionally anymore. You could have become the emotional manipulator. Like it's sort of the gossip could be on you is like, you know, in the past, you could uh, emotionally manipulate Pal too, but now, like, they've seen the light, you can't. There's been a lot of introspection or reflection uh, work done from you. At least this is what the tea is on you. You've been able to shine a lot of light on your shadow work. You may even be spoken about in regards to you shining a lot of light on other people's shadow side here as well with the Hermit. The Hermit card is obviously an energy where people could be talking about you saying that you have embarked on a really like amazing spiritual journey here or you have just sort of come out of one but you're different now there's something very different about you your emotions your moods and it's all come back down to this hermit card I feel like you've done a lot of self-reflection there's a change within you and people are talking about that I feel with the ace of pentacles if you've started a business or even a relationship people are definitely on about that I always look at ace of pentacles more aligning with a new business uh, something quite prosperous coming towards you so Whatever sort of prosperity you've received, 
previously now or about to in the future people are definitely talking about that especially if there's any business ventures you are embarking on people are definitely you know discussing um like you spending a lot of time alone to get that project off the ground we have a really long road here but we've also got the magician so this sort of gives me the impression what they're talking about is you've been able to manifest like you come up with an idea and you manifest it through hard work long roads aren't fucking easy to walk they're very hard but i feel with the magician here you've been working really hard you may be sleeping overnight this project or whatever you are trying to get off the ground you could be combating like people bitching about you behind your back maybe creating anxiety and stress for you but you have continued to hold your shit together and keep moving forward and i think this is a very uplifting vibe if this is what people are gossiping about this is amazing and i do feel quite positive in your energy pile too this is a very different vibe coming in from pile one's energy pile one's energy is very sexual like gossip yours is more like I'm doing this and like I know my worth now I'm focusing on business maybe my career I'm not really wasting my time in love some of you could be pursuing some kind of romantic endeavor here but I'm not really picking that up I feel like a lot of you are facing uh, it's sort of like a transformation for you at this point in time and that all has to do with building more prosperity in your life, more abundance. And the best way to bring abundance in is obviously focusing on goals and dreams. And most of us, that's hobbies and work. So I feel like for a lot of you, that is sort of like one piece of gossip happening for you at this time. So what else are they talking about when it comes to pile two? Yeah, so two of wands in the temperance, right? So what's the bottom energy? Three of swords. Yeah, so I feel like for a lot of you, uh, even with the three swords here, you're moving away, you're releasing things, you're healed now. I feel like with the two of wands, it's all about planning and preparation. So you've planned and prepared to heal and release things. You're no longer like clouded by judgment uh you know you no longer like have clouded judgment because you've healed something that was quite traumatic some kind of loss here is what i feel with the two of wands and the temperance so now there is more balance the thing about this temperance card and any card that i see with this kind of imagery of one foot in the water and one foot out i feel like also with the two of wands again it's a decision card it's decisions being made uh, i always look at this one foot in and one foot out it's like what people are talking about is uh you are still currently deciding on what you will do next like people who are probably taking a like a taking a i don't know a I don't want to say a step back, but they're they're curious, part two. They're curious to see what you are going to do next because you've already just done something quite like, whoa, is what I feel. So we have the Seven of Cups, great card to have when people are talking about gossip. And why do we have the Seven of Cups? Yeah, so, and we do have the Death card, so the transformation. So what I'm picking out with the Seven of Cups and Three of Pentacles, the gossip on you at the moment is you have many career options here. You have an abundance of options when it comes to your work life or maybe your, like, whatever business venture. You can transform into anything you need to in order to get a job done. I feel like there is... You're not afraid of change, or at least this is the T on you. You're absolutely fine to end something, to start a new beginning. And this is why you have a lot of options or choices presented to you when it comes to your work life. Uh, maybe even your marriage life, like who you choose to settle down with. But I feel like with the death, seven of cups and the three of pentacles, well, the main message I'm getting here in regards to what people are gossiping about is you're easily able to end a career and start a new one because of who you are, what you do. You're a very abundant person. You're very intelligent. Thinking back to, you know, the Virgo energy, the, even the Gemini energy, um, but the Virgo and 
the Libra energy, you are able to maneuver through life and chop and change careers. And that's what people are currently gossiping about you. So I don't know if you've recently talked to somebody about changing your careers and they're like, again, so they could be having this other conversation with other people who know you, but you have so many options. Some people could even be gossiping that you are a little bit delusional with how much change you had with careers. Like you're not a person who sits in a career for 25 years that's not you you'd get too stale that's boring like um you know and even here they're painting like there's a blue wall and they're turning it like what is that yellow beige so that's a massive change to go from a bright blue to a beige so some people could even be talking about um you know you getting maybe they could be talking about whether or not you get bored and that is why you chop and change jobs the way you do, or they, if you have said, I'm moving into X, X, Y role, people could be actually gossiping about you getting bored in there. Cause I always look at going from blue to beige, although beige is not a bad color. Like I, I don't mind a bit of beige, but yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that does uh, not disturb the peace. But that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Bye. Pile number three, those of you who chose the ice cream cone. So, you know, this we love ice cream, right? Ice cream's quite yummy. It's soft, it's silky, <clears throat> waffle cones, yum. Um, look, your favorite color here could be a pastel pink, but let's just see. So fun fact, ice cream was invented in China. So some of you could have an affiliation with Chinese. July is the National Ice Cream Month, so we have Cancerian and Leo energy here. New Zealand consumes the most ice cream per capita. Well, uh, Iran makes noodle ice cream, so some of you could be from there. It takes a weighty 12 pounds of milk to make one gallon of ice cream. So some of you may have a, like a thing for milk. Nature's own ice cream exists in South America. So that is sort of getting off topic. It approximately takes 50 licks to finish one scoop of ice cream. So some of you may like to be licked. Others of you may like to be the licker. So there is also, <laughs> oh God. But yeah, fun fact, New Zealand tops the list of ice cream eaters. Yay to my uh, neighbours of New Zealand here. They are our, our neighbour with Australia. 28.4 um, litres per person in uh, New Zealand. And people in, I'm blown away by that fun fact. And United States is only about 20.8. Anyway, um... <clears throat> You know, thinking about the ice cream man in the truck, he sort of comes and he goes and he surprises us. You know, you could be a little bit like that. People don't ever know when you're coming. You just sort of rock up and you're like, bam, here I am. So that could uh, resonate with some of you, or at least this is sort of the gossip. People don't know when they're going to see you. But when they see you, I feel like a lot of people's eyes light up. Their energy is like raised when you walk into the room. When people see you, they're very happy to see you. I think you um, know how to keep conversations quite light, quite fluffy. You know how to take a, like, I don't think you're easily offended either. Like people could say really weird things to you, like probably a bit below the belt. And you know how to like maybe turn that around and sort of make it more lighter so it doesn't come across like creepy or something like that. So let's see what we've got here. We do have a lot of Libra energy, but seventh house. We also have Pluto and we have Cancerian energy here. Can you see those? Probably not. Um, so yeah, thinking about Pluto. Pluto is linked with Scorpio, exalted in Aries. Okay. Big on obviously transformation, but there is this energy with Pluto for obsession and destruction and power. So <clears throat> I actually am not really connecting with the 
the you know the influence of power here but I feel like some people could get very obsessed with you because of this light, light fluffy energy here <clears throat> and can be quite destructive, destructive for them is what I feel. So you may not be aware of this or you may be aware of it. Um, obviously with the seventh house, the seventh house is linked with uh, Libra, as I mentioned. It's funny. It's funny. Hmm. What are you doing? Like it's like the seventh house, I think, I don't know if it's come up in every pile, but it's the house that is linked with relationships, marriage. Contracts, divorces, legal affairs. But I guess overall, it's like about how you respond to those in your life. And I feel like that's probably the key takeaway there with the seventh house and this energy I'm picking up with the ice cream. Like, you know, you respond to things that happen to you in life very differently. Like, it's sort of like water off a duck's back. That may not be the case when you get home behind closed doors, but I feel like the gossip currently on you is you don't really let things bother you. Like, you handle things quite well. You respond or you react to things that sort of come your way, whether it's like a divorce or some kind of like relationship. You're really smooth sailing. You don't rush into things. You sort of just... You don't just jump into things and ruin people's YouTube videos and lay down on the ground and think everything's about you like this black cat. Um, <laughs> but I would say that you are very sweet, you're very kind, you're very nurturing here. But yeah, there is something, some kind of gossip around your relationships here. Okay, whether it's past relationships, current relationships, future relationships, I feel like people talk about you in a very positive light. Maybe they are talking in regards to having a relationship with you, getting married to you. Okay, so um, and then obviously Cancerian energy is quite quite uh, nurturing energy. It's one that, uh, you know, it's quite motherly. It's quite affectionate energy. It can also be quite moody energy. Um, but yeah, obviously it's linked with the moon here. Uh, and it's also the moon is exalted in Taurus. So I feel like you are very good at expressing your feelings in the right context at the right time. You don't sort of blow things out of proportion, or at least this is like to give you confirmation you've picked the right pile, or at least this is what people are currently talking about uh, or gossiping about. Like you know how to react and respond to things in a very fair and just way. You're a very loyal person. You uh, provide very constructive feedback. Like the Queen of Swords is a person who doesn't talk shit. They're very fair. They're very just. And you're a person who can... Oh, say if somebody's like, oh, does this outfit look good on me? And it looks hideous. You would be the kind of person who'd say, look, do you have something better? Because it's like, you know, it, it doesn't accentuate this part of your body. And it sort of brings more like, I don't know. You'll know if that resonates. So let's go. Let's find out what the T is on pile three. I'm going to use a different deck. As I say that, I see the Ace of Wands. Okay. It's the current T. Oof, you've got some suitors around you. Yeah, okay. You know, this card sort of was coming out before and I was like, I haven't even shuffled yet. I just wanted to come. All right, so the bottom energy, we do have the five of cups. What's the tea here? I kind of feel like I'm, what I'm hearing here is there's missed opportunities. 
I feel like you have suitors around you, uh, the current tea or gossip on you. For some of you, you've got suitors around you who feel like they've missed an opportunity with you. Okay, they're talking about how instead of you seeing them, see how we have two cups here? We do have two people here. We've got a knight and we've also got a king of wands. So this person could be married because I always view a king of wands as a married person. It's yet to fail me in my personal private readings with my clients, but... You know, <clears throat> it will happen one day, no doubt. But the thing here is there is some tea around you being focused on maybe things from the past that maybe didn't work out and you're not really focusing on two potential people who want to invest time and energy with you. I feel like with the judgment here, uh, some of you could be having some kind of spiritual awakening here. So you've set really healthy boundaries. So you kind of like maybe not in the headspace for love, pursuing love, but there is a hundred percent the gossip or the tea on you is that there is currently two suitors uh, like wanting your time and attention. You have somebody who is younger than you and then you have somebody who is either similar age or a lot older. This person has been married. This person has had a life. This person never been married. Okay, this person is very young. They could be shorter than you. This person could be uh, a lot older than you but very culturally different to here as I'm sort of seeing you in this energy of the five of cups. So I feel like this is like some of you could be thinking, well, didn't you just tell me that I'm like this really fun, light, fluffy person? This is you behind that closed door energy. I think when you're sort of reviewing maybe your love life, you're, I don't even, yeah, reviewing in the sense of the choices you've made maybe in the past, but there is gossip that could be gossip within itself. But the gossip here is you are somebody who's quite charming. You're somebody who's like, you know, a visionary here. You've got good morals, good values. You're somebody who is investing their time and energy on some kind of spiritual journey here, some kind of renewal of self. And that is why you have set healthy boundaries here. You're finally putting boundaries in place not to be left in the five of uh, cups energy again this is depression this is not a good energy it's very low vibe um no quite like no stress about that because we will always everyone will experience this multiple times in their life like gazillions that's life uh, like this cat has got its little paw over its face feeling five of cups because she's just a cat, but she's not just a cat. But anyway, stop gushing. Um, yeah, I need to get some more because there's definitely some tea here. Look at this. And can I just show you, I said I wanted to pick a different pile and then I was a different deck and I was like, oh, I just saw the Ace of Wands. So this is definitely a lot of sexual chemistry with two people. This is two people who want to pursue you. They want to get, I want to get something started. Um, is that Michael Jackson? But yeah, there's definitely two people with big dick energy, big PP energy, whatever, <laughs> that was poor, but um, there is tea on you about two sexual uh, suitors coming your way, two suitors, 100%. They're already in motion is what I'm hearing. They're already trying to plant uh, seeds of hope or uh, like invest time and energy into you. You're going to be quite surprised with this King of Wands because I actually feel this King of Wands is already in a relationship. But this King of Wands is uh, making moves to come towards you. Look, I, I each to their own. I have clients who go down the path of having affairs and stuff like that. I will never judge you. I just personally, I have been cheated on and it wasn't a very nice feeling. So, but I did leave the country and move to the other side of the world for two years. If that didn't, if you never, if I never got to experience that, I would never have moved to the other side of the world. So, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad, but I digress. I'm not here to judge anyone. Um, but yeah, that's my personal thing. I just didn't like how it made me feel. So yeah, just don't feel all I'm getting out there is yeah, just let it be. It'll either resonate. You'll know if there's somebody married around you or in a long-term relationship that wants to fuck you. Like you can feel it. All right. So that's one thing we're getting here. So what else is the T on pile number three?
the moon. You are very secretive. <clears throat> we have the Queen of Pentacles. So, sorry, the camera quality is just rubbish. Yeah, so the Queen of Pentacles in regards to the tea, you know... <sighs> need to read this before I go there um, you know I this kind of backs up this storyline up here because it's like what the tea is is that you are hiding the fact that you have a choice or a decision to make you are kind of confused in the sense of who to maneuver towards here I feel like some people could be saying it'll be whoever sort of showers you with the most gifts. It's whoever can give you the best lifestyle. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? I personally will never settle down with a broke man ever again because I have settled down with many. <laughs> I shouldn't say many, but well, <laughs> I'm not going there. But, right, I am done here. Like I, the, I would have owned a home much earlier on in my life had I not like fall in love with poor, 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 poor men. <laughs> and anyway, each their own. Um, hence why I leveled up and, you know, went to uni, did whatever. So <clears throat> please no judgment on me there. But I kind of feel like the tea here is that you are hiding the fact that you do have suitors in your life and you are currently exploring your options in regards to making a choice. That choice is going to be whoever doesn't breadcrumb you. That choice, the choice, the person you choose will be whoever doesn't make you wait for a reply, ghost you, um, says they're going to do something but doesn't follow through. So doesn't present broken promises to you is this kind of conversation. And so now I understand this Queen of Pentacles. It's like what they're gossiping about is that you finally know what you bring to the table or you've worked so goddamn hard that you are going to, you don't need anybody else. You don't need to be showered with money or gifts or anything. But at the same time, you're not going to be this lady giving to these poor hands you want it to be very equal and balanced in your relationship and with the queen of pentacles here what the tea is here is you are very grounded and although like it's it's not like you won't date a broke person because you have enough money to probably provide for the other person here but at the same time you are allowed to be picky and you're allowed to take your time in who you're going to share your fruit with, who you're going to invite to your table. I feel like people think you, the tea on you is people have recently found out you are socializing with two particular people and these two particular people with that ace of wands want to invest time and energy on you. There's some kind of spiritual awakening these people have had because of you. They could be talking about that. They could also be talking about trying to overcome the challenges you create for them because you have your boundaries up. You've set boundaries in place. You're not just allowing anyone just to show up on your doorstep and let them in anymore. Like maybe you used to be like that. You are now tapping into your intuition, tapping into that moon energy to find out who's going to bring the most balance to you, who's going to be so flexible for you in those moments of the moon, you know. Um, feminine energy is very diverse. It can be like really high and really low with menstrual cycles and stuff. So who's going to bring more balance to you in that sense? And same if you're a dude, like, you know, um, you might have dealt like done your time with women who have like got next level emotions when they're on their period and like it can be really it's a mental illness it's, it has actually been deemed that back what 10 years ago it's in the dsm model right so and for some women it's really hectic and i feel sorry for them but there is a strong tea, strong gossip on this pile in regards to suitors in your life. You hiding it or you may be trying to tap into your intuition to figure out who's going to bring that balance. Oof, we have the Knight of Wands. Some of you could be deemed quite non-committal because you are taking your time with this. 
<clears throat> yeah, so I feel like people, what they're talking about in your decision-making process here is you're taking a very analytical approach. You are coming from a place of logic, all right, as opposed to an emotional stance. You're not just like oodling over somebody and going, oh, this person's amazing. You're not putting them on a pedestal anymore is what people are sort of talking about this time. You know your worth. You know what you bring to the table. You're patiently going to have, like you're happily going to sit there and wait. Uh, and you're just not going to allow anyone into that space is what I feel is the T here. So... Yeah, you're not going to allow anyone into your space to fuck it up. With the Nine of Swords is a very fucked up energy, right? Some of you could have gone through a lot of third party situations. So that whole affair thing coming through could really resonate. You know how that situation can make a person feel or it's made you feel. So you're going to wait patiently. You're going to get to know people as a friend because the Three of Cups is all about friends to lovers. So people could be talking about you. What the T is, is that you are focusing on building a friendship with these two people, investing your time and energy as a friend in order to see if what they bring to the table is exactly what you're looking for, hence the boundaries being set. So people are already on to pile three, like... You may have finally got yourself back out on the market. You could be exploring new connections. And the T on you is like, you don't, you're not going and having sex with them straight away. Like you're taking time, your time, you're, you're sort of friend zoning them. But at the same time, these people can still feel like this strong sexual attraction to you. And I also feel with the Ace of Wands coming out twice in two different decks, what the T is, is like people are finding this approach, this boundary you've set is making other people want you more. There is this strong sexual desire around you because you're not easy to get is what I'm sort of picking up here. So that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know down in the comments if you feel comfortable and I'll see you next time. Bye.